Hi, this is Dr. Claire, and we're going to look at how to use parsimony to evaluate uh, phylogenetic trees. Okay, so um, parsimony is the idea that the uh, simplest explanation is usually the correct one. So in the case of uh, phylogenies, uh, we assume that evolutionary events, evolutionary changes happen relatively rarely, and so a phylogenetic tree that uh, requires fewer evolutionary changes is more likely to have occurred than a phylogenetic tree that uh, requires more evolutionary changes. All right, so let's look how we can apply that to a specific phylogenetic tree. So these are the great apes, the old world apes. Um, there are actually a few more species in this, but we're going to simplify it just kind of generally. We have chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and humans, okay? So we want to know the evolutionary relationship between these organisms. And we're just going to focus on um, the uh, chimpanzees, gorillas, and humans, and we're going to use orangutans as our outgroup because they're uh, a more distantly related ape than the chimpanzees, the gorillas, and the humans, okay? So if we want to build trees that contain different relationships between chimpanzees, gorillas, and humans. With only three members in our in-group, um, there's actually only three trees you can build. You can either build a tree, let's take a look at these trees. You can either build a tree where humans are most closely related to chimpanzees. So that looks like this tree here. Humans and chimpanzees are more closely related. They're more distantly related to gorillas. And then you have your outgroup of the orangutans. You can build a tree where chimpanzees and gorillas are more closely related to each other. And then humans are more distantly related. Or you can build a tree where humans and gorillas are more closely related to each other and chimpanzees are more distantly related. Okay, so those are your three possibilities, and those are the only three possibilities if you're using orangutans as an outgroup and you only have three species in your in-group. Okay, so these are our three trees. So how do we tell which tree is right? Um, or which tree has the best support uh, from the information that we have? All right, so we're gonna use for the, to, to determine which tree has the best support, we're gonna use some genetic data. So at the bottom here, we have, um, globin pseudogene sequences. It doesn't really matter what that is. It's just some DNA that was sequenced for each of these species. And we have the sequence of those DNAs from the, the four um, organisms in question. Now, remember, orangutans are our outgroup, so we assume that they have the ancestral trait, and then we can look for shared derived traits within the in-group. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, so in this scenario, Here's a couple of sites that we might look at. Let's start by looking at this site here that is all T's. Does this tell you anything about the relationships between the different organisms in this group? They all have a T. It doesn't tell you which one's more closely related to which other one. So that doesn't really help us. Um, this one here, you might think this one seems a little bit better because um, there's only humans have a T and the other three have C's, right? But actually, this doesn't really help you either because um, all of these guys have the ancestral trait and only humans have the derived trait. In order to build a tree, we need shared derived traits, not traits that only one uh, organism has. And the reason why it doesn't really help is because if you go in here and you uh, map where that T evolved, it evolved after humans separated from everything else. So it evolved here or here or here, but in every case, that's only one evolutionary event. It happens sometime after humans uh, diverge from something else, but it doesn't help you to group them. So what we need are shared derived traits. So what does a shared derived trait look like? That looks like this. So here's a trait that is a shared derived trait. So in this scenario, uh, humans and chimps share the G, which is derived because the ancestral trait is the T, okay? So um, gorillas have a T with the orangutans and the humans and chimps have a G, okay? Now, let's map this trait onto each of the trees, okay? So assuming that the tree is true, where on the tree would this trait evolve, okay? So let's take a look at this. Um, in the first tree here, uh, you can have it evolve right here. Um, and so humans and chimpanzees have the shared derived trait and the gorillas and orangutans both have an ancestral trait. Okay, so it just requires one evolutionary change. Now let's try and put it onto this tree in the middle here. 
Now, the problem is that now gorillas are here. They're more, most closely related to chimpanzees, and humans are over here, right? So if you map the G's onto this tree, you see that you have to have it evolve twice. Because if it evolves down here, which is possible, it could evolve right here, but then it would have to switch back in the gorilla lineage, and that would still be two evolutionary changes. So it either has to evolve separately in humans and chimpanzees, or evolve in the whole group, and then switch back in the gorillas. Either way, it's two evolutionary changes, okay? And then for the last tree, Similar scenario, here I've illustrated the changing in the whole group and then changing back in the gorillas, but it's the same deal. You have two evolutionary changes. So if you're looking at these trees based on this one, uh, this one uh, site within the genome, which tree is most parsimonious? Well, the first tree, tree number one, only requires one evolutionary change. So it is the most parsimonious tree. Now, if you had a bunch of different data, which normally you do, you would collect uh, a bunch of different traits and map them all onto the tree and see which tree has the few, requires the fewest evolutionary changes to occur. And then that is going to be your most parsimonious tree. So that's how we use parsimony to, um, to determine which is the best tree.